Previet. We have seen in recent videos that there are different strategies for using binary to represent numbers. For instance, 1100 could mean decimal 12, or negative 4, or several other options. Well, there are other ways we can use binary. Sometimes a string of ones and zeros doesn't represent a number at all. In this video, we will do a brief survey of a few of the other common binary notations, including BCD, gray code, ASCII, parity bits for error detection, and Unicode. First, let's talk about BCD, which is short for Binary Coded Decimal. This is a way to easily translate between decimal numbers and 4-bit binary words. The term word is used here because a BCD number longer than one digit does not have mathematical weights associated with each bit position. Each individual decimal digit corresponds with a 4-bit word separately from other digits. There are a few different BCD schemes out there, but we'll just discuss the most popular one, 8421 BCD. 8421 simply tells us the weight of each bit position in a word. This is the most popular scheme because this is the same pattern as an unsigned 4-bit binary number. As a result, this pattern is identical to hexadecimal for the digits 0 through 9, but the pattern stops there. The binary code 1010 would never be used. Why? Because 10 cannot be represented with a single digit in decimal. Similarly, the codes for decimal 11 through 15 are invalid. This all makes more sense with an example. To convert from decimal 463 into BCD, we simply replace each decimal digit with its corresponding 4-bit word. So, 4 becomes 0100. 6 becomes 0110, and 3 becomes 0011. The advantage here is that this conversion is very quick. No need to do the repeated divide by 2 method. The disadvantage is that we cannot interpret this 12-bit result as a typical unsigned binary number. As a result, addition in BCD gets a little tricky. Given these three-digit numbers, add them together. First, we work through just like normal binary addition. 1 plus 1 equals 1, 0. 1 plus 1 equals 1, 0. And so on from right to left. But do you notice an issue when interpreting this in decimal? Each 4-bit word should represent a single decimal digit. However, this middle word would represent 15, which cannot be written with one digit. To correct this, add the binary code for decimal 6 to any invalid digits. After doing this step, which produces a carry to the next digit, we end up with these 12 bits on the bottom. Is it correct? Well, it is easy to check. The aug end is decimal 197. Remember, these first four bits correspond with a 1, these next four correspond with a 9, and so on. The add end is 361, and the sum of those decimal numbers is 558. Sure enough, these BCD words represent 5, then 5, then 8. Another unweighted binary code is gray code, named after Frank Gray of Bell Labs. Other names for gray code are reflected binary or minimum error code. This table shows how we would write the decimal numbers from 0 through 15 in both unsigned binary and in gray code. To count up to 15, four bits are needed. The codes would be different for different numbers of bits, but the algorithm to convert between binary and gray code is quite simple. We'll actually develop it ourselves in a later lesson. But for now, we'll just identify the fundamental feature of gray code. Between any two consecutive numbers, only one bit changes. For example, when moving from 4 to 5, only the least significant bit changes. When moving from 5 to 6, only the second bit changes. Check any two adjacent rows, and you'll find that this is always true, even the top and the bottom rows. 
15 and 0 differ only in their most significant bit. Why is this important? There are many applications, but we'll just focus on one here. Let's say you're designing a digital counter, as we'll do at the end of this course. At some point, you need that counter to jump from 7 to 8. In unsigned binary, this requires four bits to change simultaneously. If one of those bits lags, then you temporarily hold an incorrect count, also known as a glitch. How often do things truly occur simultaneously in the real world? Some people would argue never. Even what appears simultaneous might be occurring at slightly different times. With gray code, this problem is avoided. Only one bit changes when jumping from 7 to 8. So if that one bit changes a little too slow or too fast, it is still simultaneous with itself. No incorrect binary code will occur. We'll come back to gray code a few times in this course. ASCII is code that some of you may be familiar with. It stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It identifies 128 common symbols, like letters and punctuation, and control operations, like tab or escape, on our American keyboards, and it assigns a 7-bit code to them. It is very useful to have these standard codes because it allows different computers, which are made by different companies, to be able to communicate with each other. This chart allows us to read the two-digit hexadecimal code for each of the 128 ASCII codes, which can then be converted into binary. For example, capital M, which is different than lowercase m, is located here. The row is 4 and column is D, so the hex code is 4D. Converting this into the 7-bit code yields 100-1101. Sometimes bits aren't used to represent a value. They can be used to help identify transmission errors. The trouble with this physical world we live in is that our systems don't work ideally. Maybe a power surge interrupts your internet download. Maybe there is a scratch on your CD. Data sent is not always the same as data received. Using parity bits is a simple method to help detect errors. First, establish whether you are using even or odd parity, and make sure both the sending and receiving machines know which one. Then, for a given number of bits, the sending machine includes an extra leading bit that will make the total number of ones in that package equal to an even number, or an odd number if using odd parity. Then, the receiving machine scans each package of bits and counts the number of ones. If the count does not equal an even number, then an error must have occurred, and the receiver can request the data to be resent. Let's look at an example to make this idea clearer. In the first row, we see the letter B and its corresponding 7-bit ASCII code. The total number of ones in the sequence is 2, which is an even number. So, if communicating an even parity, we already have the proper number of ones, so a zero is used as the leading bit. But if communicating an odd parity, we need another one. So a one is used as the leading bit. You can also explore this example for Q. Obviously, this is a simple method and it has flaws. For example, if two bits happen to be transmitted incorrectly within one bit package, then that error would not be identified. Also, this method cannot correct the error once it finds it. An elegant approach for correcting errors is called the Hamming code. I encourage you to look it up. This slide shows how a simple statement in letters would be written in ASCII using even parity. Each individual character, including the space, is read as a two-digit hex number from the ASCII chart. This is then converted to its 7-bit binary form, plus a leading bit to obtain an even number of ones. And then all of these bits are written in one long sequence. That's tough to read, isn't it? But when there are only two symbols to work with, lengthy codes are necessary. 
Here's a fun exercise for you. At the start of each of these videos, you see a screen of ones and zeros appear as the theme song plays. Those aren't random bits. I've encoded a secret message in ASCII. Let me know when you figure it out. Lastly, this chart shows a tiny subset of Unicode. Unicode picks up where ASCII left off. It goes far beyond the 128 standard characters and attempts to define standard binary codes for all of the written characters in any language in the world. This is an ongoing task. As of recording this video, there are more than 140,000 characters. You can see many of these characters in a program like Microsoft Word when you click on the Insert Symbol tab. In sum, this video is a brief survey of a few different ways to interpret binary. Are you expected to memorize things like the gray code pattern or the ASCII chart? Of course not. But it is important to be aware of these various codes. And I hope the point is crystal clear that a string of zeros and ones means nothing on its own. It's all a matter of interpretation. In any communication, the sender and receiver must understand the notation being used.